Feel the power. Welcome to Righteous Invasion of Truth with Dr. Abel Damina. Welcome to the ever-increasing word feast. Abel Damina is my name. And I'm excited, friends and family members here on Facebook, YouTube, and all the platforms that can access the teaching of God's word right here today. I'm truly excited, delighted about the 30 days of glory. We've had some time of word, 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 word. And there's more word still coming until the 1st of August. is every day 6 p.m. GMT plus 1. And Sunday mornings will be 8 a.m. and 11 a.m. GMT plus 1. I'm really excited about what the word of his grace is doing in your lives. Now let me quickly mention, for those of you living in Lagos, Lekki, Lagos. We're starting a Power City campus in the Lekki area of Lagos. Every one of you watching the broadcast that lives in that part of the world, do me a favor today. You don't have a local church where you attend? Or since you started watching my teachings, you're no more satisfied. You want more. You want to be a part of our Power City campus right in Lekki. Shoot a mail to me today indicating your interest and your phone number so we can connect you with brethren in that area so you can begin to fellowship, grow together in grace, you know, and evangelize, get more people into the kingdom and build them in the message of Christ. It, it, it's so important. Lekki Lagos. The email address to send your email to with your phone number is on the screen right now. I'm expecting to hear from you today. Now, also, those of you who live in Johannesburg, Johannesburg, South Africa, you live in the Johannesburg, South Africa area. It's so important that, you know, you, 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 you pay attention because we're beginning a Power City campus in Johannesburg, South Africa. It's going to be a wonderful, wonderful time to feed, teach, and equip people in the message of of Christ. So if you live in Johannesburg, South Africa, send a mail to me today, Dr. Abel Damina, especially if you want to be a part of the Power City campus there in Johannesburg, you want to join a family of believers or the family of believers there to propagate the message of Christ and to grow together in the knowledge of Christ. The email address to send me a mail to specify where you live and your phone number is on the screen right now. For the rest of you that live in other parts of the world that have been following my teaching, and you want a, a Power City campus to begin where you are, just send me a mail today. You know, share with me your desire, or you want to be a coordinator, just send me a mail today telling me how much you want to be a part of this vision and this assignment of reintroducing Jesus to, your, to this generation so we can connect with you and see what we can do together for Christ. So send me a mail today, Dr. Abel Damina at yahoo.com. It's so important. I'm looking forward to hearing from those of you in Lekki, Lagos, those of you in um, Johannesburg, South Africa, and the rest of you around the world who want to be a part of our campuses in your locality. Finally, Abuja, Abuja, Nigeria. I'm coming to the city of Abuja from the 6th to the 10th of August. 6th to the 10th of August, Abuja. Five days of glory, five days of world explosion, five days of signs, wonders, and miracles in five days to change your life and change your world. I will be in Abuja. The details are coming on the screen. The date, the time, the venue, and a phone number for inquiries. If you call that number today, somebody will give you details. And if you have family in Abuja, reach them and encourage them to be part of these five days that will never be forgotten in the lives of those who will attend. I'm excited, very excited, because it will be a, a time of glory and a time of power in the city of Abuja, Nigeria. I'm excited, friends, family, and everybody on Facebook and YouTube. Let me quickly take you right now into the service where the spirit of our God is already moving. Happy viewing. Overcoming sin consciousness. First John chapter 3, verse 19. And it says there, and hereby we know that we are of the truth and shall assure our hearts before him. We are the ones to assure our hearts before him. Next verse. And if our heart condemn us, God is greater than our heart and knoweth all things. Next verse. Beloved, if our heart condemn us not, then have we confidence towards God. We shall assure our hearts 
and if our hearts condemn us not we have confidence towards god can somebody shout hallelujah now in the first service i laid the foundation and i'm just going to build on it right now the book of romans chapter 4 verse 5 but to him that walketh not but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly his faith is counted for righteousness he was talking of abraham here as an ungodly person that abraham was ungodly but in his ungodliness he believed on him that justified the ungodly abraham as ungodly as he was a worshiper of the moon and the stars believed on him that justifies ungodly people he didn't do anything to justify himself he believed on him all he did was believe he didn't do anything he believed on him that has the wherewithal to justify ungodly people now the word ungodly which was used for abraham in the hebrew word is asebs a-s-e-b-s asebs it means a criminal it means the wicked it means morally bankrupt people when we say you're ungodly we mean you are morally bankrupt we mean you are a criminal we mean you are a wicked person we mean you are someone who fails to honor god that word is also used for people that that are going to hell and it's also used for people that crucified jesus that was abraham's conduct a bankrupt morally bankrupt person a wicked person a person that does not honor god abraham was in the worst state that any man could be in by the description of a sinner but in that state as an ungodly man he believed on him that justified the wicked the morally bankrupt that justified the unrighteous that justified those that are candidates for hell he believed on him and his faith in the justifier was accredited accounted accredited to his account for righteousness abraham was ungodly a criminal morally bankrupt but he believed that's it that's a turning point he believed he believed on him that justified ungodly people can somebody shout hallelujah so even though abraham was ungodly god had to find a way of acquitting and discharging him of these offenses in the book of that romans chapter 4 verse 4 he says 4 verse 4 of romans now to him that walketh is the reward not reckoned of grace but of depth so if righteousness came by what you do it is no more a work of grace it means god is owing you it means you are so qualified that it is now god that is owing you therefore the payment that god is going to pay for owing you will be righteousness so now paul is giving us an expression here that that the forgiveness of sin righteousness is not a payment of a debt it's a free gift because there's nothing you do that qualify you to be paid that what you qualify for is debt and disaster you're a criminal you're ungodly so god himself has to find a way of acquitting and discharging the criminal it is not reckon of debt but of grace grace is what you don't deserve what we're saying is that there is nothing you can do to be righteous nothing there's nothing you can do the best moral man is an ungodly man in the height of your morality god sees you as ungodly because there's nothing you can naturally do to qualify man is eternally disqualified eternally even if they lock you in a room only you alone with without anybody entering the room you alone inside you will still see 
nobody entered the room just you they locked the door just you're sitting there you'll be singing man lacks the wherewithal to meet the requirement of god when it comes to justification am i communicating that's why man that's why i say it is not it's not a reward it's not a reward it's a gift if it is a reward it means god is owing you but god is not owing you are the one owing god so god decided to cancel what you owe and on top of it give you a gift this is very important it's highly fun fundamental for 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 what we're teaching here highly fundamental so grace is not a reward for good conduct grace is not a reward for good conduct in the mind of many people having a right standing they think is a reward for doing right that's the deception many people think i have a right standing with god as a reward for my morality <laughs> for my morality i have never done anything bad i'm a good boy my parents raised me up well I don't eye another man's thing. I don't touch another person's thing. I don't quarrel with people. I don't cheat people. I don't lie. I don't backbite. I don't smoke. I don't womanize. I don't uh, drink. So there's no reason why God cannot accept me. In that state, you are very ungodly. It is not things you do that made you ungodly. It is what Adam did to you. It's a state where you were put and the only way out of that state is what jesus has done accepting what jesus has done cancels your state of what adam has done it's simple the scriptures are so simple that you need a confused preacher to confuse you hallelujah i said hallelujah that's why the devil follow you around and said the reason why that that woman is not does not have children she's married is because before she married she committed abortion satan is following her that's satan satan is trying to say that the reason why you will have children is because you deserve it because you merit it it's because you are righteous if that is the basis for having children unbelievers should not be having children unbelievers wicked people shouldn't have children because if the basis for having children is because you've done you've not done something bad then no human being should have children because there's nobody that has not done something bad and yet even wicked people are having children until they're doing family planning because your father in heaven makes the sun to shine on the good and on the bad because that is his nature goodness Satan will follow you around and say you are poor because of what your parents did in your family. They call it foundation. Family foundation. It's rubbish. Total rubbish. No other foundation can any man lay than that which is laid. Christ Jesus. That's the only foundation. Outside Christ there is no foundation. It is when you come into Christ that you have a foundation. Even evil has no foundation no order have you had no order what is no order no order means no order no order no order so all this one they call family foundation evil altar evil this they are all they are all um uh, uh, a confused people confusing another confused people there's no other foundation can any man lay than that which is laid christ jesus so when you are born again your foundation is perfect and it doesn't matter which family you came from even if your father was the juju priest and you came from that family and now you are born again by virtue of born again that juju priest foundation and that juju priest lifestyle and lineage does not have bearing with you anymore if any man be in Christ. Say with me, Christ is my foundation. 
what cannot be found in Christ cannot be found in me. He believes on him that justifies the ungodly. The mission of Jesus is to justify the ungodly. In a society, somebody that has not done wrong does not need a lawyer. If everybody is behaving right, all lawyers are sacked. They are jobless. The need for a lawyer is that somebody has done wrong. And because of his wrongdoing, there is a conflict. So a lawyer is hired to help the criminal. And another lawyer is hired to defend the right person. But whether the criminal is discharged or the right person wins the case will be dependent on the expertise of the lawyer in the, in, 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 in the law. Because a lawyer that is skillful in the law can justify a criminal and a judge will approve it. And that criminal is, is, is discharged and acquitted without prejudice. What we're dealing with here is not how you feel. We are dealing with legal matters as it pertains to redemption. The legality of redemption. This thing I'm teaching is not for illiterates. There's a degree of education you must have to understand what Barista Paul wrote. The book we are reading, Romans, was written by a barista. A lawyer wrote it. So it has legal connotations. Senior advocate of, hev of heaven. Not even Nigeria. Paul, them, they are senior advocates in heavenly matters. So when you are listening to me, listen to me with your legal mind. Don't use your traditional mind to hear me. Use your legal mind to hear me. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Romans chapter 5 verse 6. How does he justify the ungodly? For when we were yet without strength, in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. The justification of the ungodly is predicated upon the death of Christ. So that is the justice involved in this redemption and in this declaration of righteousness. The legality involved is that this criminal who has found favor with the judge that the judge is coming to the aid of the criminal and the judge is ruling the case in favor of the criminal irrespective of the rudiments of the case the criminal has found favor with the judge now it's not as if the judge has bypassed justice uh -uh. the acquitting of the criminal was not just an acquittal in order for the criminal to be acquitted the judgment of the criminal has been vented on somebody without the, the the intercession and the plea of the criminal somebody by himself who knows better than the criminal decided to to, to receive the judgment of the criminal so that in the acquittal of the criminal justice will be respected oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. it's not as if god just looked and said i know you have done bad, but go eh, eh. it's not just go he took what you will have suffered because there must be justice and poured it on somebody on your behalf now that you are acquitted stop trying to go and approve of yourself before the, the judge because you've been acquitted have you ever seen somebody acquitted from a court case and he goes back to the court with certificates to still go and uh, see if he can establish a case? Nobody behaves like that. So when you now kneel down trying to convince God that you are a good person, you are stupid because what you are saying is that the one Jesus has done is not enough. You want to do your own. That's why I say these people have a zeal but not according to knowledge. They have left what Christ has done. They have gone about establishing the their own righteousness which is of 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 no significance
For when we, we are yet without Christ, no strength, we lacked the moral cap capacity and capability. Christ. This thing, somebody has done it. We are just here to enjoy it. And all of us have equal access to this enjoyment. So nobody should eye you if they eye you, eye them. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. The wages of sin is death. And Jesus paid the wages. He paid it. He tasted death for every man. So now that the wages are paid, you cannot hold the criminal guilty. It's been paid for. It's been paid for. Many churches do not understand what I'm teaching because they do not preach Christ's death enough. When you do not preach the death of Christ enough, you can't come into these truths. To be able to uncover these truths that has to do with the rudiments of redemption to liberate the believer, we must preach in perspective, contextually, the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ enough enough not just on easter that should be the weekly message of the church a man of god was with me in my study this week and i told him look let me tell you the truth the message of his death burial and resurrection even if that's all you preach every sunday if you know what the bible says you can't preach it till you leave this world you can't finish it because the death burial and resurrection of christ was the whole of eternity pulled into three days the whole of eternity forever and ever and ever world without end jesus went to the extreme the end of eternity pulled the whole of eternity into time went back to eternity past pulled eternity past compressed it in three days and rose so to preach what happened in three days a lifetime is not enough so when a preacher cannot stay there he has not understood this gospel. That is why what he did in three days obtained for us eternal redemption, eternal inheritance, eternal salvation. Why? Because what he did in three days was of eternal effect. Because what he did in three days was the whole of eternity compressed in time. You say, ah, every time you go, Papa is just talking about his death, his burial, resurrection. What else do you want to hear? What else do you want to hear? What else do you want to hear? The sufferings of Christ and the glory that should follow. That's all. You are blessed. Amen. Jesus said, blessed are your eyes for they see. Blessed are your ears for they hear. For many prophets desire to see what you see and to hear what you hear and they were not permitted. So blessed are your eyes and blessed are your ears. If your amen is louder, blessed are your ears. And blessed are your eyes for they see somebody say I see. I see what eyes have not seen in the old testament what ears have not had in the old testament neither has it occurred to the heart of men in the old testament for the newborn again for the born again man they are revealed by the spirit of the son the spirit of the son the spirit of adoption is on your inside and he is the revelator of the deep things of god the deep the deep things of god not the shallow thing the deep things of god the deep things when you hear me excavating to pull out things from depths know that the spirit is taking us deeper and we are going to get more deeper just watch it's depth somebody say depth yeah it's depth these are not things you hear and you are normal if you are still normal, you are not hearing me. You can't hear me and be normal. No. These are things that will enter you. And your entire configuration changes. You are blessed. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Can we continue? Okay. 
so it's because churches don't preach the death burial and resurrection of christ enough that is why in many churches they do not understand this revelation of justification and righteousness and the doctrine of sanctification because when you preach is death enough it will start questioning some things that are preached when somebody say you have to fast and pray when somebody say every time you pray you must confuse confess your sin that is the biggest fallacy and heresy in the body of christ that you must always confess your sin before you pray it's unscriptural and it's doctrinally wrong but it is because when you do not preach what christ has done then you have to establish things that will make it look like christ did not finish what he did we are the ones to finish it for him do you understand what i'm talking about yeah that's the impression many people have that christ did not finish it so now we have come to help him finish it that's fallacy he finished the works he rose from the dead he purged our sins then he sat down he didn't sit down because he was tired he sat down because the work was finished the work was finished as you're sitting here there is no reason under the sun no reason is reason enough to stop you from being blessed no reason that's why this sin consciousness we must crush it we must crush it because this is what has hindered the church from unveiling their true identity in christ ew kenyon said the church does not have a sin problem the problem of the church is sin consciousness there is a difference between sin and sin consciousness so what we are dealing with here in this service is how to overcome sin consciousness which is a bigger problem than sin itself Romans chapter 5 verse 8. God didn't pity you to save you. It was not an act of pity. It was love demonstrated. But God commended his love towards us. In that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So salvation is not a work of pity. It's a demonstration of love. How is this love demonstrated? For God so loved the world. So how did he demonstrate it? That he gave his only begotten son. So, Meleko Tonoko, you are born again, you are born again status was not given to you out of pity. It was a demonstration of love. These are two different things. When somebody pity you and give you something, and when somebody qualifies you for something, they are two different things. I'm teaching now when somebody pities you and does you something is different from when somebody qualifies you and you take delivery even the thing you take delivery of by qualification is different from what you take delivery of by pity god didn't pity us god demonstrated his love toward toward us in that while we were yet sinners he gave himself he gave his son up to die for us that's the height of love demonstration. It was in pity. He was in pity at all. <laughs> Hallelujah. The word sinner is a Greek word used for rebels. While we were yet rebels, rebellious people, he didn't consider our rebellious state. Eh -eh. He overlooked our rebellion and paid and gave himself as the price by faith. <laughs> he gave himself as the price by faith because when he died, he didn't die because we begged him. He didn't die because we indicated interest. It's just that we didn't have the way we died. He died for rebels. In our rebellion, he died by faith, believing that if we rebels will see the level of his sacrifice it will change us from being rebels that's why it's a commended love there was no promise that you will repent there was no promise that you will accept the sacrifice so the sacrifice was by faith because god is a god of faith 
That's why when you come to Christ, you come to faith. Coming to Christ is coming to faith. You can't come to Christ and be looking for faith. Eh? Kebota. When you come to Christ, you come to faith. Coming to Christ is coming to faith. He's the author and the finisher. So once you come into him, you have entered faith. Christianity is called the faith. The faith. You can't be in Christ and be looking for faith. Christ is the faith. So when you have him, you have faith. Because he's the author and the finisher. So when he's in you, both the beginning and the end of faith is inside you. You have come to faith. While we were yet sinners, rebels, to declare rebels righteous. He died to declare rebels righteous. Romans 8.31. Let's enter something. What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us. Who? Against us. Who? The word if is the same word for since. Since God be for us. The word be for us. Is also the same word for has justified you. They are they are That's the Greek word for it. He has justified you. Since God has justified you, if God be for us, what it literally means is since God has justified you, who can be against you? It's like saying, Who shall lay charge against God's elect? Who? Who can be against you? Now, when he said that, then he added verse 32. 32. He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us some things? So, he spared not. Somebody say, he spared not. That word spared not is the same word used for judgment. He judged his son. He spared not. He judged. And you will see that in the book of Romans 11, 21 and 2 Peter 2, 2, 4 and 5. He gave him up. He gave up Jesus to judgment. He gave up Jesus for, to judgment. Speared not is a word used for those who are judged. What is supposed to happen to the ungodly happened to the son. What is supposed to happen to the ungodly happened to the son. He speared him not but gave him up on behalf of rebels what should happen to criminals happened to his son his son took our place the motivation is love but the act was not love the act the death of christ was not love the motivation for the death was love but the act of his death was justification the reason he died was justification. The death of Christ is the justification. The death, the justification is in the death. It's not love. The death of Christ is not love. The death of Christ is the justification. But the motivation that motivated that death is love. But the act of the death is the justification so our justification is in the death he died for the ungodly that means the justification of the ungodly is in the act of the death if i'm communicating say i hear you yes it is the death that justified us that's why there is legality in redemption <laughs> you're not hearing me it's the death that justified us that is why redemption is legal it's not a by the side thing you you don't hide and say i'm justified i am righteous no stand on the rooftop because what you're talking about was not given to you in the backyard it is legal and every legal ground required to make you righteous was met 
so you have a right to stand before angels heaven demons god and all human beings and declare yourself righteous that's why paul could come to a church in corinth and say receive us face to face we have defrauded no man we have cheated no man and we have killed no man paul yes paul has not the person that killed people is Saul of Tarsus. This is Paul the Apostle. Because if any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. I'm accepted. I'm accepted. I said I'm accepted. He delivered him up. The word deliver him up means to hand over to. God handed Jesus to. Delivered him up. It's a term used for betrayal. When somebody hand you over to your enemy. You don't understand. When God delivered Jesus up. It was betrayal. Handing Jesus over to his enemy. It's like I call you and I say, come, you know, we have come a long way. I know you, you know me. I love you, you love me. I'm about to tell you something. This is top secret. Let it die between two of us. That man there is a murderer. Beware of him. He kills very fast. He doesn't waste time. Watch him. We have discussed then she takes me and deliver me. She goes to the man and say, if you know what he has just told me, you know me and him have known for a long time. He told me you are a murderer and a fast killer. What she has done is she has handed me over to an enemy. It's called betrayal. The death of Christ was betrayal. He was handed over to his enemy on your behalf. Because in the first place, Adam sold him to the enemy. So the only way to bring man out of the hand of the enemy is for God himself to betray himself by handing himself over to that enemy because it is in that handing over to the enemy that redemption will be made available. I'm teaching good here. So when we are busy saying Jesus, he, he died for us. You should understand this thing very well. You should understand it well. He was handed over to his enemy. Matthew 18, 34. Bible say, hand him over, give him up to the tormentors. It's the same thing like hand over. Matthew 27 26 hand him over to torment Romans 1 28 to hand over to torment or to hand over to a tormentor God did not deliver Jesus to himself he gave him up to his enemy Jesus was delivered to the enemy the enemy is dead God handed Jesus over to death Ephesians 5 2 take note of what I'm about to read and walk in love even as Christ also hath loved us hath loved us is that future tense or past tense past tense take note of that he hath loved us and had given himself for us he will not give he had loved us and the proof of that love he gave himself and all of them are past tense there's nothing you can do to change that love He has finished loving you. Hebrews 2, 14 to 15. For as much then, as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death, he might destroy him that had the power of death. That is who? The devil. Jesus submitted himself to his enemy. He submitted himself to death. Okay? Why will nobody be against us? Because someone gave himself over to the enemy on your behalf 
and nobody can be worse than the enemy so if jesus gave himself over to the enemy and in giving himself to the enemy destroy the enemy then nobody can be against you so what is god's attitude to sin the attitude of god to sin is favor god favors the sinner his favor god doesn't use sin god doesn't tempt with sin and god does not overlook sin god doesn't use sin god does not tempt with sin and god does not overlook sin so what does god do with sin he punishes sin on himself he takes the punishment on himself so that the justification of the believer will be on legal grounds the justification of the believer will be on legal grounds so he favors the sinner on perfect legal grounds amen so the favor a man enjoys at the altar call is the same favor he enjoys forever that day the man walked to the altar jesus i confess you are lord and that favor washed him he is he has access to that same favor forever matthew 26 28 take note for this is my blood of the new testament which is shed for many why for the remission that word remission is the greek word apasis apasis means take away to take away to take away permanently like giving providing a permanent solution so that sin can never break our relationship with god never sin can never why because the gospel is the remission of sins the gospel is the remission of sins that's what the gospel is about so therefore righteousness is a gift of god's justification of you righteousness is a gift of god's justification of you paul takes time to pick his words while you were yet sinners christ died so we are righteous because of the act of god's righteousness the act of god's righteousness is what makes us righteous hebrews 1 3 who being the brightness of the glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power when he had by himself purged our sins by himself he purged it not by our repentance he purged it by himself then he sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high he cleared it out jesus cleared it out hebrews 8 12 says he provided us remission he remitted our sins hebrews chapter 9 verse 14 how much more shall the blood of christ who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to god purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living god hold your neighbor's leg very tight and shout conscience say it again say it again say it again say it again so what i'm dealing with here is sin consciousness and the consciousness of sin is derived from the conscience of a man the conscience of a man is what generates sin consciousness so that that is why the writer of hebrews helping us to understand this issue of sin consciousness he said how much more shall the blood of christ who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to god purge your conscience from dead works from what what are dead works dead works is what satan uses to disqualify you satan say you know because you did something wrong three years ago that's why you have not got employment that that consciousness is dead works now jesus died to purge your conscience from dead works 
See, I hear you. Hebrews 10 1. Follow me. For the law, having a shadow of good things to come, and not the very image of the things, can never. Somebody shout, never. never. Can never. What is never? Never is never. Never, never. So, the law, having a shadow of good things to come, and not the very image of the things, can never, never with those sacrifices which they offered year by year continually make the commas their own to perfect that is no matter how many sacrifices they offered under the old testament which is the shadow those sacrifices can never purge the conscience of a man that is why since their conscience was not purged they have to offer the sacrifice every year now offering a sacrifice every year is like a christian confessing his sin every time That is to say, no matter how you keep confessing your sin every time, it can never remove the sin. So confession of sin does not remove sin or the consciousness of it. Because if the continual confession can remove it, the annual sacrifices of Israel should have been able to purge their conscience. But the more they offered, the more guilty they were so they keep offering and they keep getting guilty and they keep offering and they keep getting guilty why because the cure for sin is not sinlessness the cure for sin is righteousness i'm teaching you know verse two for them will they not have ceased to be offered because that the worshipers once purged should have had no more conscience of sin if that annual offering of sacrifice could have cleared their conscience of guilt condemnation and the consciousness of sin they will have offered it once and it's over but because it couldn't satisfy the the need of the human heart the conscience of a man so they had to be offering it every year and the more they offered it the more guilty they were the more frustrated and the more they kept offering it's like a christian that keeps repenting every time you pray you confess and the more you confess the more you confess till you are not sure again i'm teaching now many of you that's where you are so many of you that's where you were but there are people here that are still there every day you pray father that the one i confess and the one i didn't confess the one i did and the one i didn't do all of them i beg you are merciful forgive me who put you in that state believe it on him that justifies the ungodly it is accredited to them for righteousness who hallelujah he said no way if for then will they have ceased they will have stopped offering the annual animals if that act of every year sacrifice could purge their conscience but because you couldn't purge they kept offering it until jesus came pastor praise i can imagine the frustration these people were offering animals and confessing their sin every year till jesus came they never they never had assurance and many christians are there they don't have assurance why don't they have assurance because they are, they, they are victims of the consciousness of sin. Look at verse 3 of Hebrews 10. But in those sacrifices, there is a remembrance, again, made of sins every year. Every year they offer the sacrifice, they remember their sin. And every time they remember their sin, they are guilty. They are condemned. They are weak. They are defeated. Every time they bring the sacrifice, they remember their sin. Every time you kneel down to pray, you remember your sin. You're weakened. You are guilty. You are condemned. You become a coward. That's what those kind of things do. And that is what religion projects. Is that true? Is that true? How many of you have been to churches before where every service you must confess your sin? How many of you have been there? They will even ask you to kneel down. Then every December 31st, you do New Year resolution. Do you know why no New Year resolution used to work? Do you know why? Because a New Year resolution is a man saying, I will do this. 
then God will make sure you don't do it so that you know that it is not by works of righteousness. That is why if you are making the resolution, you are breaking it by yourself, no help. So that you know that there is no human effort that can make you righteous. Just accept what Christ has done. That's where the power is. Hey! I'm righteous. But in those sacrifices, there is a remembrance again made of sins. How many times? Every year. Verse 4. For it is not possible. Did you see that? What's the meaning of it is not possible? Eh, eh, it's impossible it's not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sin so no matter how many goats they bring there will still be consciousness there will still be guilt there will still be condemnation because goats don't have the wherewithal to purge the conscience of a man hey! preaching good I prophesy over your destiny you will molest the devil for life Somebody shout, I am accepted in the beloved. Somebody shout, I am justified in Christ. Somebody shout, Christ is glorified in me. Shout it. I didn't say, say it. Shout it. That word perfect, which is say, the sacrifices cannot make a man perfect. The word perfect in Greek is teleo. T-E-L-E-I-O-O. -E -O -O, teleo. It means accomplished, fulfilled. It means to come to an end. That's to say, the animal sacrifices can never fulfill a man. It can never accomplish a man. And it can never bring the consciousness of sin to an end. Never. Confessing your sin every year, and every day, and every week, and three times a day. You want to pray, you confess. You want to pray, you confess. It's not enough to take away the sin now. Now, if the confession doesn't take away the sin, why are you wasting your time there? The intention is to take it away. So the remembrance of sin is a proof that the worshiper is not fulfilled. Every time you remember your sin, it's an indication that you have not found fulfillment in your relationship with God. It's a proof. It's a proof that the worshiper lacks fulfillment. Hebrews 10, 11. And every priest standard daily ministering and an offering oftentimes the same sacrifices which can never take away sin that was the practice the high priest will collect their sacrifice he will pour the blood in the mercy seat they will leave the place with more guilt they will leave the place with condemnation it is true that their enemy will not be able to fight them because of what god has accepted in their sacrifice but they themselves are not fulfilled they themselves are not free in their conscience they are weak they are cowards they pray they are not sure it is answered they fast and fast on top of fasting they are still not fulfilled they sing praise worship and dance a willow and even after their willow they are willow a willow tense system nothing is working so they they have a form of godliness but no power they are inside the church, but the church is outside them. When you say, let us pray, they will pray one prayer 55 times because they are not sure out of the 55 times God has had one. No conviction, guilt, condemnation. In fact, guilt can so much pursue a believer that the believer will develop a sickness that cannot be treated. You can be so guilty that you become sick and die guilt can kill you young let me tell you guilt can give you high blood pressure guilt can even give you hiv and aids i'm not joking you can be so guilty that your immunity will collapse guilt condemnation when satan pursue you with condemnation you will be running in the darkness alone when nobody pursue you you will look around and take off many of you that's why you can't pray you're not sure god is hearing because satan has already put a chair inside your conscience and in that chair he is pumping you condemnation so when you say father satan will say is he is, are you sure it's your father then you say god <laughs> when you say god satan will say are you sure he is god he say heavenly father 
He said, are you sure? Merciful God. Are you sure? Jehovah Jireh. You keep calling all kinds of names till you don't know what to say again. You finish prayer, you're still feeling like a thief. You're walking, but you're not sure. Is it true? Yes. It's conscience. Say conscience. Hold your neighbor. Say, check your conscience. Check your conscience. Say, because we're fixing the matter now. What I'm talking about now, I'm dealing with your life directly. You're going for appointment. Satan will follow you. They will not employ you. You will fail the interview. It is guilt. It is still conduct. It's conscience. He has already finished you on the road. So when you enter, instead of saying good afternoon, sir, you say good morning, sir. As if you just woke up from sleep. Because there are some people when they wake up from sleep, because they slept in the afternoon and woke up in the evening, they come and greet you good morning. Somebody has done it in my house. Say good morning, sir. With a smile. The day has broken. It's just evening. <laughs> are you following? You are a beautiful girl. Satan will be telling you, no man will marry you. That's guilt. It's conscience. We are dealing with issues here now. And as long as your conscience tells you no man will marry you, believe me, even if you are beautiful than the queen of Sheba, even a useless village man will not look at you. I'm not joking. That's why some beautiful girl, nobody has approached them. As beautiful as they are, no man has ever by mistake, that is the thing came out by mistake without him knowing. His mouth ran out without control. I love you. He never come out. Satan is tormenting their conscience. Today, I declare, every torment in your conscience comes to an end. Amen. It comes to an end. Amen. Because the worshiper will never be complete and fulfilled if the conscience is not handled. Put up that 11. We're, 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 we're building something. And every priest standeth daily, ministering and offering oftentimes the same sacrifices, which can never take away sins verse 12 but this man hey who am i talking to here which man hey, this man this but this man hey man what animals could not achieve this man yearly 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 for many years this man this man after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever one sacrifice for sins forever one sacrifice takes care of it eternally sat down what did he do he didn't go and offer again it's one offering just one offering he was sure of it when you understand that offering your conscience is liberated forever why many of you are still confessing sin is because you have not understood what i'm teaching he sat down he didn't sit down because he was tired he sat down turn, turn to your neighbor hold your neighbor say that man is sitting down so stop asking him to stand up because there's nothing to stand up again for he finished it and sat down tell your neighbor so whatever you are get, getting today is from what he has finished he sat down why did he sit down verse 13 from henceforth not before now but after he sat down from henceforth expecting till his enemies be made his footstools who will make the enemies footstool you how can you make his enemy fools to when you are condemned you have to come out of condemnation to righteous consciousness to be able to put his enemy down to be able to say like jesus the prince of this world came to me but he found nothing in me you must be able to come to that place and what brings you there is the revelation of righteousness knowing what christ has done when jesus is revealed your identity is unveiled you will never know who you are until you see Jesus. I'm telling you. Verse 14. For by one offering. How many? By one offering. He will perfect. Somebody is not hearing me. By one offering he will perfect. He will perfect for some time. He hath perfected forever. Them. Who are them that are sanctified? 
Are you sure? Yeah. So you are sanctified. Yeah. You as you sit down like this, you are sanctified. Yeah. You like this. Yeah. I'm saying you like this. Yeah. You are sanctified. Yeah. Sanctified. Yeah. For how long? Yeah. You like this. Yeah. You are perfected. Yeah. For how long? Yeah. You like this. Yeah. You like this. Yeah. Perfected. Yeah. Sanctified. Yeah. Accepted. Yeah. Justified. Yeah. Righteous. Yeah. You like this. Yeah. For how long? one sacrifice and that sacrifice took care of conscience why did they confess sins in the old testament because the sacrifice could not perfect them in the new testament jesus has perfected us so your righteousness was achieved by a third party a third party somebody did it on your behalf okay i said okay all right now because of that looking unto jesus eh? looking unto jesus the author and the finisher of your faith okay so jesus paid for your sin and prevented you from the anger of god so the work of christ is not temporal it's permanent righteousness therefore for the believer is a permanent state what kind of state permanent state permanent state so our hearts can be wrong that's why john said if our heart condemn us god is greater than our heart eh? are you hearing me have you ever heard somebody say but in my heart i still feel like i still feel like in my heart i still feel like i still feel like in my heart see your small heart uneducated heart Many of you, what is killing you is that your heart is not educated. Somebody say education. Yes, you will soon see it now. I'm going there. You know, I don't talk anyhow. Your heart is not educated. So, when somebody look at you like this, your heart will say, ah, it will break. You start feeling bad. Just because of the way they look at you. You start wondering, is this something I have done? You're always thinking of something you have done. You are living in guilt all the time. You greet somebody who doesn't answer. You start wondering, ah, did you see that time when I took that meat? <laughs> or maybe they have told him. You're, you live in that state. Once there's any disapproval, you start examining yourself. You don't also ask, maybe the person is not thinking of you. It's because you are proud. You think you are too much. So that's why you think everybody is thinking of you all the time. That's why you think when you just do like this, everybody says, hey, hey, morning. <laughs> Nobody is thinking of you. We are thinking of Jesus. Who are you? Who did you die for? Even the mosquitoes in your house, you are killing them with raid. You can't even save them. <laughs> you are not saving the mosquito. You are raiding them. Shh! They all die. And you think you are important. You can't even save common mosquito. At least you should carry the mosquitoes and put them inside a, an aquarium. Let them be singing for you. Wow. But you can't even save mosquito. So stop thinking of yourself too much. See, when people think of themselves too much, it's a revelation of their insecurity. It means you are suffering from insecurity and you're using this thing to cover up and what brings insecurity is condemnation you don't have assurance of who you are it is still the same problem do you understand when you see people spending money more than they can afford trying to fit into class they have a problem with condemnation condemnation is the reason for many problems you can't afford it and you're collecting on credit so that you can belong who are you belonging to who cares about you you think you're important nobody's thinking of you for your information and if anybody's thinking of you he's, he's, he's thinking of how to reduce you a little by collecting a little thing from you to subtract from you that's the only thing they're thinking of so stop flattering yourself uh -uh. look at yourself in light of christ condemnation is wicked it is condemnation that will make a woman make up and start looking like a prostitute in an attempt to look fine it's condemnation. 
she cannot accept herself the way she is so she now to to help the way she's feeling inside there's a condemnation going on hey this is the root of problems i'm dealing with here condemnation is the root of problem it's a conscience problem you wear cloth you don't still feel good enough so you walk like a thief inside the cloth even though it's a new cloth but you're walking inside like a thief and meanwhile you bought it all that's why there is therefore now no because that is a major problem the gift of no condemnation ah! no. a husband will tell the wife why are you killing yourself you are beautiful you say you are not sure the man that love you and marry you is telling you are fine you are telling him he's not sure so if he's not sure who is sure who is sure if your husband cannot be sure who is sure he said, no, you're flattering me. I know you don't want to tell me the truth. Then when she has put a nice dress, you go and carry a useless one and put. Because when you are trying to overdo, you do the wrong one. You wore a simple dress. Your husband said, you're beautiful. He said, I know you're just trying to make me feel fine. Then you go and remove that one. And wear one where you look like the senior maid of your house. It's condemnation. A man wants to be accepted. He starts drinking alcohol. Because your friends are drinking. He said, put a little for me. The Bible said, take a little one for your stomach sake. Do you have stomach problem? <laughs> Condemnation. You don't need people to accept you. You are accepted in the beloved. You don't need people to love you. Jesus loves you. You don't need human love. Human love is selfish. Be satisfied. We assure our hearts. Somebody say, I assure that is i educate my heart assure means train your heart Edu that's why i say your heart is not educated you it's your job to educate your heart how do you educate your heart you educate your heart in the love of god you educate your heart in the love of god i used to have problem with complex when i was younger i would stand in a mirror and carry an eyeshadow and be putting on my big eyebrows just trying to look nice carry vaseline and rub on my mouth and look like one retired prostitute because i used to feel like i was not handsome I, I would be putting all kinds of things until i understood the love of god then i retire resign from all that nonsense and i find out anything i wear i find inside nika trouser jean pajamas eh or krika anything just bring suit native traditional chief tenancy anything i wear i find inside even if i don't find for your eye i find for my eye i'm accepted in the beloved glory he said he said we love god he said no 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 rather we are loved by him now that's, that's uh, we can't love him enough it's, it's him that love us first corinthians chapter 8 so sin consciousness therefore is a sin conscience sin consciousness means sin conscience now many people depend on their conscience a lot but you see your conscience is you conscience is not the voice of the holy spirit like we were taught before mm -mm. conscience is you your conscience is an act of your will because your conscience is your making it's an act of your will your conscience is your making conscience is not your spirit your conscience is your making how do we establish that first corinthians 8 4 as concerning therefore the eating of those things that are offered in sacrifice unto idols we know that an idol is nothing in the world and that there is none other god but one verse 7 how be it there is not in every man that knowledge for some with conscience of the idol unto this hour eat it as a thing offered unto an idol and their conscience being weak is defiled their conscience does not have knowledge so because their conscience doesn't have knowledge if they eat meat sacrificed to idol 
it defiles them because of the weakness of their conscience but barbers like us even if the meat came from a shrine and you put it on the table i give thanks and i like the meat i eat it and drink water and i walk out thanking jesus for provision it does me nothing because there are no idols no idols they don't exist why my conscience knows that the incantation of a native doctor cannot touch me i know it so even if i'm watching the native doctor do incantation it does not affect me i'm just pitying his stupidity we know it's knowledge your conscience is the amount of knowledge you have that's what we call conscience your knowledge he said their conscience weak is defiled even though we know that there are no idols but since now it's a matter of conscience what i'm doing here is what i'm teaching you now is giving you a very strong conscience where even if satan accuses you you can slap him and not feel anything many are weak their conscience is weak that's why when you look at them i tell them you're very stupid in fact you're a useless person they start crying their conscience is weak it can't carry that kind of that kind of statement but when you tell somebody like me that i'm stupid <laughs> i will smile and give you a gift first of all i know you must be stupid to think i'm stupid that after you look at me like this me you say i'm stupid like this as i be like this even when i'm sleeping i'm not stupid so if you look at me and you call me stupid i know you are stupid to think i'm stupid so if somebody just look at you and say you are idiot say ah ah me <laughs> the conscience cannot carry it his conscience is weak so that small statement has defiled him that's why people like us you blackmail us we are still smiling we are still smiling. our conscience can carry it because your blackmail is a waste of time there are people you don't do anyhow with you can hurt yourself that's why we are teaching you so that you grow in grace grow in revelation and your conscience becomes strong in the word of god so that when people look at you and say you will see you say me i see jesus <laughs> you always tell that me i see jesus there's nothing else to see their conscience is weak that is where consciousness of sin come and that is why when satan show you what you did 10 years ago fear your heart is weak you say ah <laughs> you have cried on that matter 20 times now and your conscience is still weak <laughs> an evangelist come and say 15 things that cannot enter heaven 15 of them number one prayerlessness cannot enter heaven some of you when was the last time you pray for three hours you can't enter heaven your heart is weak the man will say come out for prayer <laughs> must i go and empty handed your conscience is weak they have just used one small razzmatazz to bring you out to the altar and you have come out humbly crying your conscience is weak no teaching somebody come and say you know there is what we call family altar when you come from a family with a strong altar that is why four of you are girls none of you is married you have to do boo conscience is true mm. it's true some of you here your family altar is strong that's why all the boys are useless mm. Mm. <laughs> weak conscience if you are one of those come out weak conscience no training lack of training but these are they who by reason of use have their senses exercised in the doctrine of righteousness 
they can discern between good and evil i prophesy to you today satan will never take advantage of you Amen. satan will never take advantage of you amen. by the grace of the lord jesus christ i declare unto you as you stand and shout that amen whatever redemption has provided you are a beneficiary of it amen. you will harvest the blessing of jesus you will enjoy the grace of jesus i declare condemnation will never have a place in your life you have escaped from judgment you have escaped from wrath you have escaped from defeat by the blood of the everlasting covenant every reason they have given you as to why you will not marry is cancelled right now every reason they have given you and every reason you have given yourself as to why everybody in your family has to be poor including yourself is eradicated now every reason you have given yourself as to why you will never succeed in life is eradicated today because you are righteous you have succeeded because you are righteous you are rich because you are righteous you are accepted because you are righteous nobody can reject you ah the word of god says say to the righteous it shall be well every righteous man in this house lift your two hands up i prophesy it is well with your destiny it is well with your family it is well with your career it is well with your life the one whose amen is louder i declare where others fail you will succeed where others enter and they are turned back when you enter they will welcome you where they tell others there is no opportunity the moment you show up there will be 10 opportunities your case is different your case is different there could be darkness in egypt but there will be light in goshen i prophesy your case is different others may be messed up but your case cannot be messed up you are a royal priesthood you are a chosen generation you are a peculiar people I declare today by the power of the Holy Ghost your going out is blessed your steps are ordered by the Lord where others are struggling you will enter and excel I prophesy over you as your two hands will stay on your head I declare today whatever makes others common when you get there you will stand out you will stand out you will stand out your cup run it over your cup run it over I command your mind to produce ideas concepts insights i command your mind to dissolve questions your mind to solve problems your mind to produce solutions by the righteousness of god on your inside i declare where others fall short you will stand tall you will stand tall i bless you as your pastor every disease in your body melt and fall out melt and fall out melt and fall out fibroid melt tumor melt cancer melt high blood pressure crash 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 air conditions be healed eye conditions be healed fever go hiv die every disease die infections flush out your body be healed be healed from your head to your leg you are righteous be healed you are righteous be healed you are righteous be healed I prophesy over you as your two hands are open unto heaven I command angels in the department of heaven supply this week as we enter receive supply everything you've been waiting for money to do I command strange favor to fall on you from above help from above God is opening to you his good treasure we are a man akatome eranoka koratana mereka to kataya as your two hands are lifted receive the rain of favor the rain of favor people that don't like you will like you after today they will like you long-standing issues will be resolved delays are cancelled disappointments are eradicated you are blessed you are blessed we are they forgot you they are remembering you now they will not only remember you they will reward you they will pay you and they will settle you you are blessed to be a blessing if your amen is louder it is done for you now welcome back ladies and gentlemen welcome back i believe you've been affected impacted by the word of god very 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 explosive word today please don't go away it's so important you know jesus said man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of god brother paul says i commend you to god and to the word of his grace which is able to build you up and give you your inheritance among the sanctified 
once again those of you in Lekki Lagos who want to be a part of our Power City campus we're starting one in Lekki Lagos shoot me a mail today on the email address indicating your desire to be part of the Power City campus in Lekki and then those of you in Johannesburg South Africa who want to be a part of our Power City campus in Johannesburg so we can flood that nation with the message of Christ. If you shoot me a mail today indicating your location, your phone number, we'll see how we can connect all of you together and begin something massive in the city of Johannesburg. And the rest of you around the world who want to be a part of our Power City campus, you need to just send me a mail with your location and phone number. And those of you who want to coordinate, just indicate you would like to coordinate the campus all right we will train you equip you and we will mobilize people to join you so together we can spread the fragrance of jesus christ around the nations of the world but i'm excited about the opportunity to continue to be a blessing i'm looking forward to hearing from you today remember the 30 days of glory is on invite people to be a part of it looking forward to hearing testimonies of god's grace upon your life until i come again your ways on this same platform don't you ever forget this that the kingdom of god is in power. Amen. Amen to your victory station. Cause we've been on the preparation.